Hello and welcome to Pharmacy's Pharmacy Teaching videos. These series of videos are focused on minor ailments, so common conditions treated with over-the-counter medications and advice, and today we'll be focusing on motion sickness. Motion sickness, otherwise known as travel sickness, is a common symptom complex which is caused by repeated movement during travel, in a car, ship, plane or train, but can also occur on fairground rides. Motion sickness is thought to occur due to a conflict between what the eyes see and what the inner ears and the balance mechanism inside them sense, therefore sending conflicting nerve signals to the brain. Visual messages from the eyes inform the brain that the immediate surroundings are stationary and your position is not changing, but a sensitive balancing organ in the ear tells the brain that you are moving due to the movement felt. Motion sickness is characterised by nausea, vomiting and abdominal discomfort. In addition, there may be profuse sweating, excess salivation, headaches or the patient may have a pale, cold, clammy appearance. Symptoms of fatigue, weakness and an inability to concentrate may also appear prior to nausea. Symptoms typically resolve when the journey is over, but may last a few hours or even days after the journey ends. Children between the ages of 2 and 12 are most commonly affected, however fortunately many children grow out of having motion sickness. Motion sickness also tends to affect women more than men. So what are the over-the-counter treatments for motion sickness? Antiemetics should be given to prevent motion sickness rather than after nausea or vomiting develop. The most effective drug for the prevention of motion sickness is hyacine hydrobromide. Don't confuse this with hyacine butyl bromide used for cramps because the hydrobromide part is what makes it able to cross the blood-brain barrier and work on the brain. Hyacine is available as patches or in tablet form. In terms of the tablets, the most common brands are Joyrides for patients aged 3 years and over, Quells Kids for patients aged 4 years and over, and Standard Quells for patients aged 10 years and over. The tablets should be taken 20 to 30 minutes before the time of travel. Quells tablets can be sucked, chewed or swallowed, whilst Joyrides are typically chewed. Because of this, absorption into the bloodstream is very rapid. However, they have a short half-life and therefore a short duration of action of around 6 to 8 hours. So doses can be taken every 6 hours as required, but no more than 3 doses in 24 hours for quells, and no more than 4 doses in 24 hours for joyrides if the patient's aged 13 years or above. However, the maximum daily dose is lower in children under 13 years for joyrides. As we mentioned, hyacine hydrobromide is also available as a patch under the brand Scopoderm. This is licensed in patients aged 10 years or above. To achieve the optimum protective effect, a Scopoderm patch should be applied about 5-6 to six hours before travel, or on the evening before the journey, because the method of drug delivery is slow as it's absorbed through the skin. The patch should be applied to a clean, dry, hairless area of skin behind the ear taking care to avoid any cuts or irritation. One patch is sufficient to ensure protection for up to 72 hours. Hyacine products are contraindicated in patients with prostatic enlargement, paralytic ileus, pyloric stenosis, glaucoma and myasthenia gravis. They can cause anticholinergic side effects including dry mouth, drowsiness and blurred vision and interactions may occur with other medicines that have anticholinergic side effects, as well as with alcohol as it can cause an increased sedative effect. Other treatments for motion sickness include sedating antihistamines. These are slightly less effective against motion sickness, but are generally better tolerated than hyacine because they have fewer side effects. The antihistamines that can be used for motion sickness include cinerazine, under the brand name Stugron, and promethazine under the brand name Avamine. If a sedative effect is desired, promethazine is useful, but generally a slightly less sedating antihistamine such as cinerazine is preferred. In terms of Stugron or cinerazine, this is licensed in patients aged 5 years and above. It should be sucked, chewed or swallowed whole with water and preferably taken after a meal to reduce gastric irritation. 
In patients aged 12 years and above, two 15 mg tablets are taken two hours before traveling, then one tablet every eight hours during the journey. Whereas in children aged five to 12 years, it's half this dose. As per the manufacturer's guidance, it should be avoided in porphyria and it's also cautioned in patients with Parkinson's disease as it can aggravate the condition. In terms of side effects, it can cause drowsiness and nausea and concurrent use of alcohol, CNS depressants or tricyclic antidepressants may potentiate the sedative effects of Stubron. In terms of promethazine or avamine, this is licensed in patients aged five years and above. In adults, for the prevention of travel sickness on short journeys, one tablet should be taken one to two hours before traveling, with lower doses for children depending on their age. For information on the caution, side effects and interactions for promethazine, please refer to our video on insomnia which covers promethazine in detail. Antiemetics such as domperidone, metoclopramide, 5-HT3 receptor antagonists and other phenothiazines are ineffective in motion sickness. Acupuncture bands, such as C-bands, can be applied to a point on the wrist using a plastic stud in an elasticated wristband, which can be used to prevent travel sickness, but there is very little evidence to support its use and of course that means it doesn't work for everyone. And finally, travel advice. So these following tips can help avoid travel sickness and I've created a table of do's and don'ts. So in terms of the do's, preferably drive if possible as drivers rarely suffer motion sickness because they're constantly focused on the road ahead and attuned to the movements that they expect the vehicle to make. Do reduce motion. So sit in the front of a car with the head tilted back to stabilize the balancing mechanism in the ear. If a patient's on an airplane, then book a seat near the wing, or if they're on a boat, stay on deck or in the middle of a boat to help keep motion to a minimum. Do look straight ahead out of a window and focus on a fixed point in the distance, such as the horizon, so that the brain is not receiving mixed signals. Do breathe fresh air if possible, or ensure the vehicle is well ventilated, for example, by opening a car window. Do close your eyes and keep them closed for the whole journey or try to sleep as this reduces positional signals from your eyes to your brain and reduces the confusion. Do distract yourself or children by talking, listening to music or singing songs. There is some evidence that distracting your brain with audio signals can reduce your sensitivity to the motion signals. Do break up long journeys to get some fresh air, refreshments and take a walk or exercise. Other options which some people find useful is eating crystallized ginger or ginger biscuits or drinking ginger ale and this can help with sickness in some people. Otherwise you can try sucking boiled sweets or peppermint based sweets to ease pressure on the ears particularly on an airplane. Sips of cold water or sweet fizzy drinks can also help tame the tummy. In terms of the don'ts do not read, watch films, or use electronic devices. Don't look at moving objects such as passing cars or rolling waves. Don't eat heavy meals, spicy foods, greasy foods, or drink alcohol shortly before or during travel. But do have a bite to eat before the journey to help keep the stomach settled. Avoid pungent or strong odors such as strong smelling food, smoke, or perfume. And finally, what should a patient do if they are actually sick? If they are sick, then they may find that this relieves some of their symptoms a little, although not always and not for very long. If they have been sick, they should try to put a cool flannel on their forehead, try to get some fresh air on their face and rinse their mouth out to get rid of the taste. They shouldn't drink anything for 10 to 20 minutes, although very tiny sips of cold water coke or ginger ale may help. After this they should go back to taking all the prevention measures as we've discussed in the table. So that's all for our video on motion sickness. I hope you found that useful. As always please like, subscribe and turn on your notifications for our YouTube channel as well as following us on Instagram or Facebook so that you can keep up to tabs with our quizzes. 
Thank you.